world, America's favorite vacation destination. The cheer, cheer, cheeriest place in all the world, where the river's made of quantum and the mountain tops are fizz. With fun and games and rides for all the moms and pops and kids. But it turns out there's a place with all the zip of Nuka Cola. Come on down to Nuka Welcome to the Overseer's office at Nuka World. I figured we could head back here to the repurposed bar at Fizz Top Grill and keep things more low-key on the quest stuff today. I know I said the next Fallout video would be on Nuka-Cola cocktails, but that one needs some more time in the scripting oven. There are some key differences between the Vault Dwellers cookbook and the games, and I'd like to further dissect those so I can give you the best video possible. So, instead of cocktails, today, we're talking about Nuka-Cola floats and determining which of the four Nuka-Colas from the cookbook pairs best with the ice cream recipe. To see the sodas themselves being prepared, check out the link over here and the videos will play in order, ending with this one. To summarize, we've made classic Nuka-Cola, Nuka-Cola Quantum, Nuka Cherry, and Nuka-Cola Quartz. The Quantum has a number of pre-made options, so today we're going to use both the blend I made at the end of last video that I think is like the most accurate for what a Nuka-Cola Quantum probably was like, and and also what I have left from the cookbook recipe. However, on the Nuka Cherry, we're just gonna stick with the slightly more lore accurate version we created in that video. That switches up the ratio of cherry and cola syrups to more closely correspond to the data found in the inventor's computer terminal. To paraphrase, it is described as a cherry soda with a hint of cola and some red food dye, not cola with a hint of cherry. Also, some comments on the all cookbook Nuka Colas video brought to my attention a bit of a rift in the Fallout fandom on the ingredients used in the classic Nuka-Cola. The recipe itself calls for browning sauce, a vegetable-based ingredient typically used in gravies, sauces, soups, and stews. But some people argue that it must be a typo and they actually meant to say browning liquid, an ingredient common in Jamaican cuisine that combines water, caramel, and salt. I used the explicitly stated ingredient of browning sauce in my syrup, which is what started the conversation in the first place. After seeing the comments, I managed to connect with the cookbook's author, Victoria Rosenthal. I had initially asked her about the identity of the note writer in the cookbook, but also wanted to know about the great browning sauce v liquid debate. On the many notes in the cookbook, she confirmed my suspicions and told me that she more or less imagined herself in that situation, pulling from her various playthroughs of the games and then built the note writer off of those experiences. When it comes to the browning ingredient, she confirmed that the cookbook is correct and that the recipe was actually developed with the exact brand of browning sauce I used in the video, but she also expressed some interest in experimenting with the browning liquid in the future. From this, I think we can safely assume then that the browning sauce is currently the most accurate version of the recipe, so that's the one we're going with. On the subject of official recipes, How to Drink recently developed a Nuka-Cola recipe from scratch and tasted it with Tim Kaine, the original creator of Fallout and lead programmer from the first game. Tim gave Greg's recipe the stamp of approval as the official Nuka-Cola rendition, and I'd be interested to try it, but Tim also hasn't been involved with the franchise since 1998. So I view the officialness of his current takes on the franchise in a similar light to Michael Kirkbride's additional out-of-lore contributions to The Elder Scrolls. Interesting and thought-provoking, but not exactly official or canon. Don't get me wrong though, I'd still love to chat with either Tim or Michael about their respective lore takes. Are you kidding me? They're legends. Back to the beverages at hand today. I have further improved our beverage experience here in one key way. Instead of mixing the syrup with club soda, I combined it with filtered water and carbonated the still mixtures with the drink mate so that even the liquid present in the syrup gets bubbly. I want the soda in these floats to be crispy so they can stand up to the creaminess of the ice cream even better. Interestingly, the Nuka-Cola float is not found in any of the games. However, this is understandable given the fact that it takes a lot of power to operate a freezer to produce and store ice cream and by extension be able to make a float. However, there are references to ice cream as a pre-war dessert in every Every game since Fallout 3 at least, typically as signs and billboards. Although Fallout 76 has a number of locations that indicate they once sold ice cream. Since it takes place far closer to the events of the Great War, it would make some sense that there would be more evidence of pre-war amenities. We even have ice cream decorations left over here at Nuka World. 
just no actual ice cream. To make our floats, of course, we need some. It didn't come standard in the vaults that received the Vault Dweller's cookbook, but instructions to make it did. Miss going out to the local diner and ordering your favorite float? Don't just sit there, make your own. Craft your own ice cream and customize your Nuka-Cola float with the syrup that best describes you. Who are you? Feeling a bit cherry? Or perhaps vanilla is more your style. This recipe provides a special of plus one perception for 30 minutes and pairs well with the Deathclaw Wellingham. I also wonder if that perception stacks with the stats that already are present in the sodas. Something tells me it doesn't. To get a taste of that pre-war delicacy known as ice cream, you'll need two cups of heavy cream, one cup of half and half, three quarters of a cup of sugar, a pinch of kosher salt, one vanilla bean split and scraped, one cinnamon stick, and two star anise. To make the ice cream, step one. Combine the heavy cream, half and half, sugar, and kosher salt in a medium saucepan. Place over medium high heat and stir to combine. Add the vanilla bean, cinnamon stick, and star anise. Bring to a low boil, but make sure to stir frequently to keep the milk from sticking to the pan. Reduce the heat to low and simmer for 20 minutes, stirring frequently. Step two. Transfer the mixture to a medium bowl and allow it to cool before covering, and refrigerate for at least one hour. Follow the instructions of your ice cream maker to make the ice cream, then place in a freezer-safe container and let it freeze overnight. Prior to serving, remove the ice cream from the freezer for 10 minutes for an easier scoop. Step 3. To make the float. Chill a tall glass in the freezer for 30 minutes. Add the ice cream scoops to the cold glass. Carefully pour the Nuka-Cola soda into the glass. Stir slightly and serve. Rewinding for a second here because I want to talk about the actual sodas being poured because I have two notes here. First, I'm going to pour our Nuka-Cola. I did bottle these ahead so that I could not have to sit here and make them for 20 minutes on camera. We're just gonna pour some of that Nuka-Cola goodness over the top there and it looks like our ice cream is sort of blocking it. Awesome. Oops. Good thing we've got a straw. <laughs> it's really foamy. No surprises there. And for this one, I'm gonna leave that bottle there because it's pretty, but we're actually gonna use the Nuka-Cola from the cookbook in this glass, and I'll put that one in a separate one. And this one is our Nuka Cherry, which I have altered somewhat to make it a little bit more cherry and a little bit less cola. There is some cola there, but it's much heavier on the cherry and much lighter on the cola. And these Pilsner glasses are not quite conducive to <laughs> pouring over ice cream. They kind of bottleneck at the bottom. On this last one, <laughs> the Nuka-Cola quartz, I didn't want to carbonate the cream that goes into it, but I did want to add the cream to the carbonated mixture because that's how it's served, so I figured that would be appropriate. When you're drinking Nuka-Cola quartz, you have a, a limited amount of time, probably uh, an hour or less, before the heavy cream kind of chunks up and then you're just drinking little chunks of fat in your beverage. And one of the comments in the previous video talked about lamenting the fact that Nuka-Cola Quartz was not chunky because apparently in one of the game files they say that Nuka-Cola Quartz is supposed to create this sensation of drinking crystallized sugar, almost like you have like chunks of Pop Rocks or I don't know, something in there that's like grainy, which I guess the, the vanilla beans that are still in it kind of lend that, but also maybe that's just chunks of milk fat in there because uh, yeah, this, this first pass got chunky quick. So I am not going to use this one just cause it looks a little sus. We are just gonna <laughs> chalk that one up as a loss and add our cream after adding the syrup to our ice cream. So just, just a little extra creaminess in there. And perfect. Now we're gonna deviate slightly from the instructions because the cookbook's pictures have whipped cream and cherry garnishes, which I want for the aesthetics, even if they exclude them from the instructions. Since it wasn't explicit, I'm just gonna use some canned whipped cream as it also looks like that was used in the picture. This one's already creamy enough, but 
we'll just do a, a little layer on top. And rather than maraschino cherries, there are fresh cherries used in the pictures, so that is what we're going with. And there we have it, the new Coca-Cola floats. Let's taste them already. Just to give you a baseline on the ice cream, and maybe I'll just taste a little bit of what I have in our uh, second glass here for the other new Coca-Cola Quantum. It's a very good ice cream. It is very sweet, it is very rich. It's easier to scoop because I think it's got a pretty high fat content. Much like the classic new Coca-Cola recipe, it uses anise pretty heavily, so it's got a good licorice undertone. I don't mind that, some people do. It smells like black licorice. Yeah, I'm just really not into black licorice, but the ice cream's good. If you don't like black licorice, just dial back your anise in your recipes, just pro tip. Use like half of a star instead of two full ones. Like I made a second batch just for fun. This is still my first batch with the instructions as is, but I, the second batch I made to use up the rest of the cream and half and half that I had. On that one, I dialed back the anise in it and I think it turned out like perfect for both my taste buds and my wife's. It's up to you whether that's your cup of tea or not. But I really like it. The anise is not overwhelming to me. Up first, the classic. Classic Nuka Cola still has those familiar spice and citrus elements, but paired with the vanilla and creamy ice cream, it's really good. Over to the Quantum. I'm not getting a lot of ice cream on this one. That one is so citrusy that it is still standing up to the ice cream in its own way very well. While the regular Nuka-Cola pairs well with the ice cream and you get both that creaminess and other elements from the Nuka-Cola, the Quantum has such a pronounced citrus aspect that I'm still hunting for <laughs> the ice cream. And maybe I just need to mix it up a little bit more. Yeah, I think between the citric acid added to that batch. It's still really, really intense. That's really sweet. Oh, hi, big dog. Hey, <laughs> come on, come, come, down, come on. Down. It's also like, I like it. It might be a little too tart. We'll have to come back to it, but I'm not getting a whole lot of the creaminess still which is kind of mind blowing. That's a acidic glass right there. Over to the Nuka Cherry, which is fantastic. There's just a little hint of that cola, but you're getting just a really pronounced, rich cherry creamy flavor that is delicious. That is a fruity little dessert. And visually, the, the red food dye does give it a nice pink hue. Without that, it's still kind of like a ruddy color. It's still red, but it's like a deep purpley red that as soon as you add any amount of Nuka Cola to it, that's when I really pick up on the anise. I prefer this with less cola, more cherry, even as a float. This is just a delectable little treat. I probably could have also made one that was like the regular cookbook version of the Nuka Cherry, but you can see that video if you want more clarification on this. But as it is in the book, the Nuka Cola flavor drowns out the cherry and you barely get a hint of it, which is just not how it's described in game. So I think that is a little closer to what the people of pre-war Fallout America would have been consuming. Is this the cherry one? This still tastes like black licorice. But at the very beginning, before I get the black licorice, it tastes really good. Over to the Nuka-Cola Quartz as a float. It's really good. The Nuka-Cola Quartz recipe already tastes like melted ice cream as a soda. And so when you pair that with ice cream, you're just having ice cream flavored soda mixed with actual ice cream. <laughs> it's getting even thicker and creamier the carbonation adds just a touch of acidity. I feel like it's it's helping me pick up on the other spices present in the ice cream. I'm getting a little bit more of the cinnamon actually on this one. And just a hint of that anise flavor. That actually works out really well. Psh, hey, there's no for kitties. This one's really good. It's just like vanilla ice cream. Quartz. This is really good. I would drink this whole thing. This is my favorite. This one, and then the blue one, and then the pink one, and then the regular one. I'm not lying, this is really good. So far, 
I think the Nuka Cherry might be my favorite in this combo. The cinnamon from the ice cream pairs with it to give it this cherry pie vibe. And I know we talked about the syrup itself and the drink itself being like a cherry pie. But with the ice cream, you're getting the best of both worlds there because I don't know about you, but I, for one, love a hot slice of pie with a cold scoop of vanilla ice cream next to it. And this is just kind of that minus the crust as a float. So it's really good. I like, I like this one the most. Say, remember how good food used to taste? Ice cream and apple pie. <laughs> the spices definitely accentuate the cherries and it's nice. I'm gonna hop back over to the Quantum, see if we can't get a little bit more of the ice cream pairing or if this truly is just such a citric acid bomb that you can't get anything else. <laughs> Okay, once it starts mixing, it gets a little better. Honestly, that tastes like it could be, if it was more homogenous, it would taste kind of like a Dole Whip. The intense fruit acidity paired with the cream just gives it this amusement park dessert vibe that I actually really like. But you're not gonna get really any of the extra little nuances of the spices in the ice cream. It's just gonna be some cream with the acidity. I do want to hop back into the classic really quick. That's just fun. That's good. But of course, of all of them, it's the heaviest soda on the spices. So the ice cream is really just adding a little bit of extra sweetness and richness to the entire beverage as a whole. It's a classic. Lastly, I would like to do our little quantum here, our, our second version with the old Nuka-Cola quantum blend we made. It has been sitting in this bottle since I filmed that video, but as somebody astutely pointed out in the comments of that video, stale, partially flat soda that's been sitting on a shelf and survived by chance is most likely what regular Nuka-Cola tastes like 200 years after it was bottled. So this might be the most accurate version of things. And let's give her a shot. That one is definitely a little less acidic than the other one, so you're getting more of the ice cream. It also means you have to blend Jones Soda Berry Lemonade, the Fault Dwellers Cookbook recipe of Quantum, and G Fuel Quantum all together and carbonate it. So I don't know if that's really worth all of the effort, and there still is, you know, a little bit of that G Fuel-y aftertaste, but as some people have pointed out, that aftertaste, you know, we can chalk up to Strontium 90. Is it the ultimate mix thing yeah. that you did? After you pointed out the aftertaste that pre-workout has, that's what I taste. Yeah, I like the other blue one more than this one. It's like a strong aftertaste. Maybe it's just because the straws are way at the bottom. Did you put cherries in here? Yeah. Cute. <laughs> <laughs> and there you have it. The Nuka-Cola float lineup. Classic Nuka-Cola makes a classic float. Nuka-Cola Quartz makes for an ice cream flavored ice cream float. The Nuka-Cola Quantum ends up tasting like an amusement park dessert. And the Nuka Cherry Float tastes like a cherry pie with a slice of ice cream sans crust and happens to be my favorite. Now that we've made them all and I've given my tasting notes, which Nuka-Cola float would you prefer? Subscribe and stay tuned for the first Nuka-Cola cocktail video, but in the meantime, we'll be getting medieval for the next few videos in both Tamriel and Westeros. Also, if this video is coming out before my first Game of Thrones video, apologies. I had a couple extra things to pick up for that one. If you haven't subscribed yet, you can do so here. Consider joining the channel with a membership or supporting me over on Patreon if you like what I'm doing and want to see more. To my right and left are some great videos I know you'll enjoy, and until next time, cheers my friends!